Hi you guys, welcome back for our daily practice questions. As always, you know I like to introduce myself first and then get into my disclaimer for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner and I'm the founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I provide resources, tools, review courses, review videos, review books, and one-on-one -on -one sessions to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on their boards as well as in practice. I've been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally with exam success. Now, I always like to go through my disclaimer and reminder that we know there's no absolutes in medicine. We treat on a patient by patient basis and any other questions that you see here, I have designed and created on the current guidelines that are being tested on the ANCC and the AAMP exam, okay? So I create and design these questions based off of what they are currently testing you on so you're able to gear and prepare accordingly for your exams, okay? Now, any of the videos that you see where I'm teaching on things that we currently do in practice, I will always say that so there's no confusion. So with that being said, let's get into our questions for today. Question number one states, 50% of the patients in the clinic were randomly selected and assigned to receive the new COVID vaccine. The other half did not receive the vaccination, but maintained wearing masks. Weekly COVID tests were completed to see who may have a positive test or a negative test result. What type of research model is this? Is it A, longitudinal, B, quasi-experimental, C, experimental, or D, cross-sectional? Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments, you guys. All right, so you know I always recommend reading the stem of the question first because it allows you to slow down to ensure that you're answering what is being asked of you. So here it states, what type of research model is this? All right, so we want to go and look and see what we're describing here to determine what type of research model they're including. But this is a prime example why you want to uh, read the stem of the question because the scenario here, you may start to process and try to think through and figure out what's going on when really you need to pay attention and see what type of model this is being explained, right? So it says 50% of the patients in the clinic were randomly selected and assigned to receive the new COVID vaccine. Already, that is uh, key information, right? Because this is an experiment. The best answer here is C, experimental. But one of those key uh statements is the random selection and assignment of the the people who are being tested so you know your control and treatment group right that is the key identifier for experimental because with experiment and i get a lot of questions people with experimental and quasi experimental but remember with um experimental think of any experiment you're testing something out right if there's one particular thing that you want to test to see the result of it for using it, doing it, whatever it is that you're researching and experimenting, right? But with an experiment, the way that it is truly experimental is because we randomly put people here, there to try this. I'm randomly going to give you this to see how you respond to this medication. You know, that's a true experiment, right? I hope that makes sense. Um, so here, as you can see, 50% of the uh, patients in the clinic were randomly assigned to a group to receive the COVID vaccine where the other half didn't. And then you're determining who had a positive result versus who had a negative, right? Experimental. All right, question number two. There is a new hypertension medication and some providers in the office have decided to start the patients with hypertension on this medication while the other providers decided to keep their patients on the current medication, on their current med medications. An assessment of the pre-existing patient's blood pressure and any symptom changes are evaluated in patients who are taking the new medication versus those who remained on their previous treatment regimen. What type of research model is this? And I'll read that one more time. There is a new hypertension medication and some providers in the office have decided to start their patients with hypertension on this medication, while the other providers have decided to keep their patients on their current medications. An assessment of the pre-existing patient's blood pressure and any symptom changes are evaluated in the patients who are taking the new medication versus those who have remained on their previous treatment regimen. What type of research model is this? Is it A, longitudinal, B, quasi-experimental, 
C, experimental, or D, cross-sectional? Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments, you guys. So again, reading the stem of the question first, what type of research model is this? So let's break this down, because if you're thinking of your models, you need to pay attention to the key things. So there's a group, we have a, a, a treatment, right, that hypertension medicine. And we're not randomly assigning. There are people who have, um, it was non-random, right? Hey, you decided you wanted to uh, use this for your hypertension patients. Hey, you decided that um, you're not. You're going to keep your patients on what they previously uh, were being treated on. And then we're just evaluating the um, changes on those who are taking the new medicine versus those who remain on their current things, right? So this is what? B quasi-experimental because what is quasi-experimental and this is the thing when i do one-on-one -on -one sessions and we're preparing for the non-clinical portion because you know non-clinical is over 60 percent of the ancc exam right so you can get it in different scenarios you can get straightforward definitions you can get drag and drop and you can get big fluffy scenarios like this because i, I as i always say with non-clinical material meaning those professional topics those research your medicare your ethics right there's no workaround. These are terms. You got to know it. There's no uh, different uh, way around it. So when they give it to you in a scenario, it's going to be wordy. It's going to be fluffy. And you're going to have to slow down and really identify what they are saying here, right? So here, just realize that, hey, we are researching a particular treatment here, right? And we are not randomly assigning these. These are people who have decided to be in this group or um, who have decided to opt out, right? And so this is considered quasi-experimental. Quasi, what does quasi mean? Y'all know I always say, let's break down your med terms when you are struggling to identify something. But quasi actually means like re resembling something. So it's resembling an experiment because we're still testing to see something, right? And uh, we're testing two separate groups to identify a, a, um, a result, I should say, you know, a result. But with experiment, we randomly assign them to see how this particular thing um, results. Whereas with quasi-experimental, it's, sim it's similar, but we do not randomly assign, okay? Um, also, with quasi-experimental, we typically uh, are going back and looking at the results and evaluating those from pre-existing groups, okay? So like in this scenario, the pre-existing pre patients, blood pressures and symptom changes, because all of these patients already were pre-existing. We have things on them that we can look back at to evaluate that compared to this, this new experiment, right? So be quasi-experimental. Typically, when you see a scenario for experimental, it's going to be a random assignment and we're testing something. We have a control group and the treatment group we're testing, right? Then we also have quasi-experimental that resembles an experiment. So we're testing something, but we're not randomly assigning them to it, okay? And then lastly, question number three, what is the strongest research model? Is it A, a randomized control trial, B, a cohort study, C, systematic review, or D, case series? Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments, you guys. This is simply based off of the research hierarchy pyramid, and I can't express this uh, enough, but you need to know what it is and know what comes into those orders, and that's how you're going to be able to determine strongest versus weakest. And you know, C is the best answer for this. The systematic review is at the top of the pyramid, okay? All right, you guys, I hope you found this helpful. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. But y'all make sure to meet me back here. And if you struggle with any of the non-clinical material, I have a non-clinical series. I have a full non-clinical um, video. I have non-clinical practice questions all on the channel. Go click on the playlist and it's under non-clinical so that you can just work through those if you are struggling with any of that. And if you need any of the resources that I offer, feel free to reach out to the nursing studio at 803 400 6864. You can also shoot a text message to this number or shoot us an email at dnursingstudio, the number one at gmail.com. 
The resources that I offer are my review book, either the ebook or paperback option is both linked in the bio of this channel. It is designed for family and adult Jiro. Um, it is broken down by system. There are interaction, interactive sections per system, as well as practice questions, rationales at the end of the book. Um, there is a self-paced independent review designed for family and adult Jiro, also linked in the bio of this channel. The upcoming five-week group review will be in September. Be on the lookout for the um, enrollment link for that if you're looking to join that. And then lastly, the one-on-one -on -one sessions. I offer these in three different tiers. Either you can book a session to cover one to two weaknesses at a time during the session. You can book an exam readiness assessment. Also, you can book the custom one-on-one um, -on -one plan, which is the most popular, where you are provided with a pretest. Based off of your pretest results, um, I gauge your strengths and weaknesses and design and structure a study plan based on the time that you are looking to allot to prepare for boards. I work alongside you during that period of time and then get you prepared for an ex successful uh, exam day. Now, all of these things are so customized that I always say reach out to us either by phone or email so that we can gauge what you truly need. Okay. But as always, y'all make sure y'all meet me back here. Happy studying. Bye, y'all.